Now that we understand the difference between a compiled language and a interpreted language, let's talk about how these programs are running internally. So in the Python file, I tell the Python interpreter to read one line at a time and execute that line. So this first line just says print hello world, and the Python interpreter will simply execute that, which gives us our output hello world. Now the C++ file behaves a bit differently. As you can see, I had to write seven lines of code to get exactly the same output. And the reason for this is that C++ is based on what are called functions, that is, blocks of code to be executed separately. Now a single program can have many different functions. I can create another one down here called int test, or whatever name I want to give it, and give it different commands. and they will all execute just fine. However, I have to actually call the function before it will actually execute. So whereas the Python interpreter will read one line at a time, the C++ compiler will group lines of code together in these functions. The most important function is going to be this int main, which predictably holds our main body of code to be executed. When I compile my C++ script, it is going to look for int main, and that's going to be the first thing that runs when I actually execute the program. So by typing in my dot slash a dot out, it is actually looking for this int main function and then executing all of the lines within it. Now let's break apart this function and talk about the individual elements of it. First is this, int. That is referencing a data type. And what I mean by that is some form of information that is being stored. We can think of integers, or strings of characters, or Boolean values for true and false values. And there are many, many different types of data types in C++. So by specifying int at the beginning of this function, what I'm saying is that the result of running this function will be an integer. And that becomes clear down here at the bottom return zero. So the return statement is saying once this function is executed, this is the result. And I can put any number I want here. It just has to be an integer. Now at the moment, it doesn't actually matter what the result of this function is because the execution of the code is what we're after. So I'm just putting an arbitrary value of zero as my return statement. So in the declaration of this function, we specify the type of result we're going to get, then we actually give the result in the return statement. Now in addition to the result of running the function, we also want to name the function. So in this case, it's main. And this largely can be any arbitrary name you want. I can name it human, or I can name it tower. Whatever I want this function to be named, it's fine. The only caveat to this is that the executable file is going to need int main in order to know what to run first. We are then going to open and close these parentheses. Now, in these parentheses, you can actually pass some information into the function to be used within the function, but for now, we're just gonna leave that blank. We will get to that later. After the parentheses, we have our curly brackets, and these sets of curly brackets basically box in all of the code or the body of the function. So let's step through this program and talk about what's going to happen when I compile and execute it. First, it is going to take this block of code and recognize it as the first thing to be run because it is named main. The program will also know that the result of running this function will be an integer and no values are being passed into the function. Then it's going to execute all of the lines of code between the curly brackets, first printing hello world to the screen, and then returning our result of zero, thus satisfying our integer requirement. So I imagine that may have been a bit confusing, and is probably the reason that most courses on this programming language will tell you to just ignore all of this for the time being and focus on something else. But I wanted to introduce the topic to you right at the beginning, that way you kind of had an understanding of what all of this was supposed to be, even if you don't fully understand it yet. Once we talk more about functions and actually put them to use, 
then their utility will become clear. So for now, really what I want you to understand is that all of this is a block of code to be executed together. That's the bottom line. And we have to have this in our program because the executable is going to look for our int.main function when it tries to run. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.